Today is the last of four on what's cool with the Connect software. And today we're going to look at the automation module, Connect Automation, which is called Workflow. Now, basically, what I really love about Workflow, the reason I use it almost every single day, is that Workflow makes the automation of very simple tasks even easier. So let's say every single day you need to take files from one folder on your computer, put them on a network drive and name them a certain way for backups, for example, um, or you want to create multiple versions of the file automatically. Well, what happens with Workflow is that you can automate these small tasks. If you're in IT especially, you find yourself having to do 50 different actions every time a new employee comes in and you need to create their user account, you need to create their email, you need to create forum accounts, you need to create their user profiles. There's a bunch of things that you need to do and Workflow can do maybe not all of them every step of the way, but can simplify your life by removing a lot of the, of the crud that you have to do every day. Essentially, Workflow is a user interface with drag and drop plugins for scripts. Um, and this makes it very easy not only to create all your little automation tasks, but also to look at them later on and not just be looking at 100 lines of VB script code and go, darn, I forgot to put comments in here. I don't know what I'm doing. So if, if I take a look here at, um, at workflow and I look at one process. Now, this process takes a PDF in a specific folder and it uses metadata tools to sort this PDF by customer and invoice ID and then it splits that PDF into individual files which it puts in a separate folder. Um, this other script will take a folder listing, so the list of files in a specific folder which can also include subfolders and all the files inside of it, so a full folder structure. And it will go through each file, load it, and checks whether it's a big file and puts it in a specific folder. Otherwise, it puts it in another folder. Now, this, this is actually a simple task that you might have to do. And then you take the, the folder and you sort it by file size and you select the big ones, you put them somewhere else, and you select the small one, you put them somewhere else. That's, that's the, the beauty of Workflow. Now, Workflow functions with triggers. Essentially, the first task inside of any process. Here are the folder listing, here are folder capture. Uh, and an example I have here, we have an LPD input, so it captures from a printer queue. Uh, this is the, the additional beauty. If you have scripts that run, then how do you trigger them? How do you start? something that has to run automatically. Well, you could use the Windows scheduler, you could use cron jobs, you can use a lot of things, but that makes for a complex setup, a complex uh, configuration. Here, what we can do is, if I want a task to run at the end of a month at 5 p.m., I can set that up and it runs automatically. Otherwise, I can just say, well, run as soon as possible, run every four seconds, run every five minutes, um, run on a specific interval, at specific days, dates, whatever you want. So you can basically trigger and select what happens and when, and that is, I think, one of the most important things about processes. Now, the triggers, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot in here, but those that we have are pretty powerful. You can trigger via an email. You can trigger when a file is dropped. You can trigger on somebody uh, dropping a file in an FTP folder. You can select an HTTP process. Actually, the server input is somebody does a request or a system does a request on your server via an HTTP query and you trigger a process and you can return a response. That's, that's the fun thing. And then within your process, you have what you would expect from a basic scripting language such as JavaScript or VB script. Uh, you have a lot of actions you can do, file transformations, you can connect with databases, you can uh, change the file, search and replace, etc. You also have some uh, process logic such as branches, conditions, loops. You have sub-processes. You can end one process and send the file to another. It's a huge toolbox 
And when you start working with it, you'll realize that there's a whole lot more that you can do with it that you didn't think was even possible at first. You'll find yourself going back to workflow and asking it to do things for you almost every single day, I think. Now, what about what about data? What do you do and what kind of data do we support? Well, all of the files that we've seen that are supported in Connect, so uh, TXT, XML, PDF, uh, CSV, all of these are supported by default with a lot of the tools that we have. And you can also connect through a, almost any database. So now, even if it's not a file format that we know of, um, you can still probably work with it. You can either transform it into a format that we expect, or you can simply use um, personalized tools and extend the use of workflow for that specific file type and for your own needs. Because not only do we have a bunch of predefined awesome tasks for you to use, we also have some more advanced extendability possibilities. So here, for example, we have the run script action. Run script will, as the name says, run a script inside of the process. And this can be VBScript, JavaScript, Perl, or Python, depending on what you have installed on your system, and whatever that language support. It's server side, so the Windows scripting host, um, you can do whatever you want with it. The Windows scripting host gives you a whole lot of possibilities, and whatever language you use, well, it also has a lot of capabilities, a lot of things that it can do. And if that's not enough, you can also use the run external program task, which lets you call an executable file outside of workflow as a command line call and return the, the results to it. Um, either, yes, I've succeeded, or here's the modified file that this program did. So you could convert image formats. Uh, you could reorder CSV from an external source. You can do a lot of things with this. Because this is a video series about Connect, I have to at least show you um, that we have all the plugins, all the things that you would do in Connect manually from the interface. So run a data mapping and create print content and then output it to a certain format, then you can all do this. And these are all individual. Not only can you call them statically, so run this process every time with OLSG invoice, but you can also call them dynamically. So you can have something in your data file that triggers what template you're going to use. This is a very, very small hint of how much more power you have in workflow when it comes to connect. And I'm sorry, one last thing, because it's very important and because it is awesome, the interaction between workflow and connect. I know I'm running a bit long, but you'll want to hear this. Any time that you run something related to connect in workflow. So here, the data mapping, create print content, and create job specifically. Um, these three tasks will create these items inside of the connect database in the background. Um, this is awesome because Let's say you have a, a system, you have an AS400, or you have a legacy system running on a computer that you can't really touch. You want to receive the individual invoices that this system generates every single day on demand, and you want to create a big print job at the end of the month. Well, you can do that. I have an example here where I'm receiving the line printer job at the at, at, as an input, so the AS400 thinks it's sending to an LPD printer, but in reality, workflow captures it. It runs the data mapping on this file. It creates a print content. Then it sets a property for it. Here I'm doing a month batch, but you could do a batch ID. You could give it a specific property that you want. And at the end of the month, I showed you earlier, at on the last day of the month at 5 p.m., presumably when everybody finished working, then it retrieves all the item from the database, um, all the content items that equal this batch month. And once it has all these items, it just creates output using your output presets and sends it to a printer. That's, th that's it. That, those two simple processes, 
Of course, they're simplified because I'm just trying to show you what they do. You might have a more complex process with conditions and metadata mixing and blah, blah, blah. But it's the, the perfect example of the power that we have. Of course, you can also create email and web from here, as you would expect, and automate it all. And this concludes today's Connect with Evie. I hope you learned something new, and if you have any questions, comments, uh, things you want to hear about, please don't hesitate to sound off in the comments below. Thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe if you want to hear about more, and as always, see you in a few clicks.